everybody. This is Brian Gardner once again from WP Engine Builders. I am a principal developer advocate. And in today's video, I am going to teach you how to build uh, two, not one, but two uh, FAQ sections with WordPress blocks. Now, FAQ sections are great if you want to display relevant information uh, to your company, or also as an example, they can be used to display sort of a persuasive FAQ uh, shortly below a pricing table. So let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna go through two different types of FAQ sections. The first one, as you see here on screen, is just going to be a very basic with an opening sentence and a little box uh, FAQ section. Uh, as you can see here, this is the FAQ section. It's using the details block uh, inside of a group block. And uh, to show you how this works, it's sort of like the accordion style thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add a new page and just get started. So uh, we're back here in uh, WordPress. We're going to go ahead and create our opening sentence. So we got that. Uh, and then we're going to start the details block. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the block add view. We're going to select details. Uh, and so what it does is it gives you the opportunity to kind of uh, write the question. So this is going to be, uh, why should I use the frost theme question mark? Uh, I've gone ahead and copied some text uh, as the example here. Now, uh, so this is going to be the first, we'll call it uh, frequently asked question. Uh, what you see here with the carrot is the question and this is the answer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just update this and we could just see what this looks like uh, for context. So this is what we've done so far. This is how that works. And we'll go through and I'll show you how to style some things. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to bold this. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to the settings and go into typography and go to appearance. And inside of that, I'm going to select medium. Now you'll see it actually bolds the entire thing. Uh, so I will select the paragraph, I'm gonna go list for you so you can see the details block has this paragraph here. Uh, and so I'm gonna go and select the paragraph that's here and then sort of undo that appearance by just going back and selecting this to light. So now we've got the bold for the question and this here. Um, I also noticed that there's a lot of space here. Uh, and as I update this and show us on the front end, uh, maybe this feels like just too much space. That is by default uh, because WordPress block app is being applied. So the two elements here are being given the 30 pixel default spacing that exists inside of Frost. Uh, and so that's very easy to do. I'm inside the paragraph block. I'm just going to go to dimensions margin because uh, there's a top margin being applied. And so I'm going to select that. And as you can see here, I've got this sort of spacer. Uh, this is using t-shirt sizing. Each step is 20 pixels. And so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually just do 10 pixels. That feels a little better. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and update that. Now, uh, what I also want to do after this is I want to add a separator. This sort of gives the visual uh, ness. By default, separators have this sort of a styling. So we're going to go wide line, which then extends the line in between each one. So as we update this and then look at the front end, um, There we go. Now, uh, I actually put that spacer, or the, excuse me, the separator inside of the details block. So I'm gonna pull that out by just kind of doing that, moving it around. Uh, and so now what we have is uh, this. Now, looking at our example, you'll see here, uh, there's several uh, of these. And so uh, a quick shortcut is what I'm gonna show you here is we're gonna select the details block and the separator and we're just going to duplicate that. So if you have them highlighted and then right click those three buttons, uh, three dots, you can see duplicate. And I'm going to duplicate that uh, a couple of times here just to give us what we're looking for. Uh, it's easy to just duplicate this and then go into each instance and edit the question. Uh, that way you don't have to sort of format it each time. Now, if I update this and we see what we've got here, you can see here. Now, here are the, the frequently asked questions. Each one has that 10 pixel margin spacing here, so it's already spaced well. Uh, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all of this. I'm gonna multi-select uh, all of this other than that opening paragraph. And you can see it's all highlighted, so it's being selected. I'm gonna hit these three dots and I'm gonna select group. 
And what that does is it puts this all in a group, which gives me the ability to come over here to the settings and apply a background color to the group, which you'll see happen here. And so now we've got this background color of gray and we also wanna add some padding inside of that. So if you come down here to dimensions, you can see again, this is the step spacing. This is horizontal and vertical spacing that we're uh, given the option to. And again, each step is 20 pixels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of give it a 40 pixel uh, padding. And so if I update this, you can see now we've got this uh, box and inside each box has the FAQ and that is how we go ahead, as you can see here, that is how we do a simple FAQ inside of the content section. Now, next, I'm gonna show you a more creative and uh, design-focused way of doing FAQs, and we'll get to that here in just a second. Okay, next up, we're gonna do a little bit different uh, layout for our FAQs. As you can see here in this example, we're gonna use the columns block to separate sort of a little bit more text with the call to action and our frequently asked questions. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go back into the page that I'm working in. And because we're using this, and this is a, a wide width layout, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start this and wrap this all in a group. So I'm gonna select the group. I'm gonna change the width here for the group to wide width. Uh, and typically what I do is just jump in and add my spacing up front just so I have things spaced out. And again, we're using the columns block. So I'm gonna place a columns block inside of here. Uh, we'll go 50-50 just to see how this works. Uh, and again, we can see here, I'm gonna remove uh, this. And so the columns block that we have here uh, is gonna also be that uh, 1200 pixels wide. Uh, so we're gonna start on the left side here and uh, I'm just gonna look for the heading block cause we're gonna just put our FAQs, excuse me, heading here. Uh, I'll close out of list view to make this easier to see. Uh, and then again, we're gonna, we have the paragraph block and I copied the text from the example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that there. Uh, we can see we've got this text and um, now we're gonna come over here to this column, which is going to be the right-hand side. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick copy of text here to shortcut this. Uh, and like we did the last time, we're gonna add a details block here. Why should I? I use the frost theme, question mark. Uh, I'm gonna paste that text. Uh, and like we did the last time, we've got the details block selected and we're gonna change the appearance here to medium to make that bold. We'll go into the paragraph block that exists inside the details block and set that appearance back uh, to light. Uh, and so we're in the column. I'm gonna go ahead and add that separator. Uh, again, we're gonna make that wide line. So uh, do a quick update. We'll see what this looks like so far. Uh, so a couple things to point out here. You'll see that the uh, in Frost, this is using the regular page template, which always shows the title. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go back into the page tab here and under template, I'm gonna select no title. And if I update that, you'll see uh, what it does is it removes that title there. So we've got the start of what we want to do. Uh, again, like last time, I'm going to go ahead and multi-select these two items. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to set the spacing on the paragraph. So when I copy things over, uh, it'll copy it each time. So again, we go into uh, the top margin and we're going to select 10 pixels. That moves it up. You'll see there's just a little bit of a gap here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select details and separator. And we're going to duplicate this. Um, four more times to give us a total of five FAQs. And so we do that, uh, giving you a quick update. We can see here, we've got that. Uh, again, looking at the, the example, we're gonna go ahead and add everything here into a group, multi-select, three dot options. We're gonna select group, uh, right-hand side under styles. We're gonna select the background color that we want. Uh, and again, we're gonna add a little bit of padding to each side. Now, there's some more styling we can do just here within the columns block itself. Uh, you can see uh, maybe there's a little bit of, uh, not enough space here. You wanna give it a little bit more space right now uh, because the columns block is using the default block gap. Uh, we're gonna select columns here. And on the right-hand side, you can come down to block spacing. We wanna change as you can see what's going on here. 
uh, the spacing in between the two columns. So I'm going to go ahead and select large and then you can see what happens. It sort of separates itself a little bit more. Now, uh, this looks like it's good. Uh, the left hand side might need a little bit of work. You can see here uh, that we've got um, this is vertically centered. And so I'll show us if you go to the columns block here, you see there's a little option here where we can align it in middle. And so what it does is it aligns the columns vertically uh, in the center. As I update this, you can see what happens here. This goes down. Um, and so uh, I got a typo here in, <laughs> in my text. Uh, so let's just for the sake of going through and just uh, fixing the typo, which from time to time it happens and shows that we're human. Uh, that's why. Okay, so we've got this here. And so we've got a full width section. Now, a uh, couple of reasons why we're using uh, the group block here uh, is because in the event uh, we want to do something different, like perhaps add a pricing table above it, uh, we can do that. And so what I'm going to actually do is go here and I'm going to go into the insert block section and I'm going to choose a pricing pattern. Uh, we'll just go with this um, three column pricing and I'm going to update that and pretend like this has now become sort of our pricing table. Uh, maybe we'll add it. We would add a heading and a um, let's just do that. We're going to say my pricing and below are my rates. And so maybe we want to center this. Uh, we want to presumably make this a heading, uh, maybe even an H1. Uh, maybe we want to even make that larger. Uh, so we would maybe, maybe 60 pixels. We want to center it. Uh, and then, of course, maybe want to put a little bit of spacing on top of it. So I'm going to go to margin top. And again, I'm on the, the heading block that's there. So we'll just maybe do 100 pixels. And you can see uh, just where we're at. So this is it. Uh, these two items, again, have the uh, standard default block spacing. Uh, so I'm going to go into this paragraph tab. And we're just going to change um, the top margin on that maybe to 10 pixels. And then uh, maybe we want inside the columns, we want to also add a little bit of margin, just spacing uh, to kind of space this out a little bit. Now, as we can see here, this is sort of where we're at now. We've got the pricing table and below here we have the FAQ section. Now we've got this in a group. So if we wanted to do some unique design stuff, maybe we wanted to make this full width and maybe even uh, have a darker background. And so I'm going to just go ahead and we're going to kind of do a little bit of design here. Um, this group originally we made uh, wide width, but we wanted to span full width. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and hit full width. Uh, and because we're doing that, I'm going to add a little bit of spacing on each side inside of it. Um, and I think what I'll do is instead of making it a drastic uh, change, I'm just going to go ahead and apply this gray background to that entire block and um not necessary but this group block that exists over here had that background also applied i could potentially just clear that out um, similarly i can because we don't need it i can reset the spacing uh, so that 40 pixels that was around it is no longer necessary so if i update this we can see now how this looks and sort of now we've got this uh more unique section now you'll see here this automatically kind of just goes out to the sides uh, and the reason behind that is uh, the columns block that um, is inside of this group needs to have some special treatment. So we want to go ahead and re-enable inner blocks, use content width. And as you can see what happens, this then shrinks down to the 640 pixels. That's default. Uh, so if we go to the columns block inside, we now have the ability here in the settings to select wide width, which then spans it out to the 1200 pixels. So as we update this, uh, we can go ahead and you can see now things line up and now we have a really kind of cool section and you could add more spacing above and below. Uh, but you'll you'll notice on uh, traditional pricing tables, there's always um, a FAQ section below or generally always because people want to sort of reinforce that there are several reasons why uh, you should go ahead and either sign up for the service or buy the product. So uh, this is a little bit more of a creative way to use the FAQ. Um, section using the details block and uh, columns as well. And so uh, one more thing I'm going to show you here in just a second is uh, what if you want to change this arrow? 
And so there might be a reason uh, you prefer to choose this arrow, uh, this up and down and left and right arrow. Maybe you want to customize that. There's a recent post on the WordPress developer blog uh, written by Justin Tadlock, uh, which I'll show you here in just a second. It's called Styles, Patterns, and More with the Details block. Uh, if we scroll down to his table of contents, you'll see here, uh, maybe we want to add a custom marker. And so that sends us down to this section. And in his example, uh, he's using a plus or minus instead. Uh, this link will be part of the YouTube uh, description. So go ahead and see there. I'm going to copy this CSS. This is the stuff that does the trick. Uh, this basically changes and adds the plus and minus into that area. Uh, so if I go into uh, the appearance and editor, and then click over here on the right hand side up in the upper right hand corner is the ability to play with custom styles uh, if you select more you'll see there's the option to add the additional css block uh, and if i go ahead and just paste what he had there this controls the sort of open and closing and hit save uh, you'll see here now on the front end these arrows become pluses and minuses so that's that's just more of a sort of a design and style preference uh, so if you want to customize that, you can. There's probably some other ways to extend that even further with custom SVGs. But uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, this article here is great. This article covers a lot of the details block that we used here in this FAQ section. Again, this link will be in the description of this video, so you'll be able to access that as well. Uh, and so once again, this is the sort of creative two-column way. And of course, there's other ways we can use the details block uh, to create FAQs as well. But uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching this video. Loved showing you how to build FAQ sections uh, with WordPress blocks, mainly the details block, a heading block, and the paragraph block. And we look forward to producing the next video to show you what we can do with WordPress.